Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So what do Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google all have in common? Every one of these companies have either frozen hiring altogether or closed their new grad software engineering position. They're not the only ones. Adobe, DocuSign, Duolingo, Disney, Instacart, Pinterest, Shopify, Tesla, Lyft, Klarna, and Uber have all also closed off hiring for this season. Nowadays, it's actually really uncommon to find tech companies that are hiring new grads. So yeah, I think it's safe to say Fang is a officially dead. Harry Potter is dead! <laughs> now the question is, what's next? In this video, I'm going to break down what this recent trend means for computer science students and break down exactly how you can survive the recession and get a job in 2023. On July 20th, Google announced that they were initiating a hiring freeze, mainly focused on taking headcount and reassessing the needs of the company. This resulted in Google swiftly removing all entry-level positions from their hiring page. Even now, while it does look like some internship positions have opened back up, their new grad graduate position is closed and seems like it will stay closed for the foreseeable future. Soon after Google announced their hiring freeze, Meta responded with a slowdown of their own. On September 30th, Zuck announced a hiring freeze and planned to reorg Meta. He also stated that Meta would probably have fewer employees in 2023 than they do currently in 2022. This hiring freeze resulted in Meta rescinding tons of 2023 intern offers and instead just giving them a month of salary and asking them to sign an NDA about what happened, which is completely unprecedented. You're fired! Get out of here! Meta was also super hesitant to give return offers to the current intern class, with less than 10% of them getting offers to come back full-time. Meta even recently announced a heavy reorg and advised their own engineers to either find another position internally, or just quit the company altogether. So yeah, it's not looking good for entry-level software engineers who want to work in Meta. While Google and Meta have made the most public announcements related to freezing hiring, no fang is safe. Amazon also just recently announced their own hiring freeze in certain sectors of the company, and both Apple and Microsoft have quietly removed their new grad positions off of their respective careers page. Basically, for current CS students and those of us who are graduating in 2023, the gates of FANG have fully and perhaps permanently been closed. So what does this mean for the future of software engineering and working at big tech companies? Well, if you're a computer science student now, you probably chose your major in one of the most heated markets for tech. Mid to late 2021 was an incredible time. The markets were at all-time highs, inflation was low, and tech companies were scrambling to hire as many people as possible. You're hired and you can work here as long as you want. However, just a year later, things are very different. As I explained before, the market is low and tech companies are, for the most part, waiting it out before hiring in large numbers again. If you're someone who doesn't go to a name brand university, doesn't have an internship at a super well-known company, or any connections that work at massive tech companies, I'm going to be honest, this next year is probably going to be tough for you. But that doesn't mean there's nothing you can do. You'll just have to focus on different areas that people often overlook. My first step is to forget about only applying to sexy companies. This is probably the most important tip I can give you. A lot of people without experience often fall into the trap where they only apply to super well-known companies like Meta, Uber, and Google. And because they have nothing on their resume, their applications are essentially automatically discarded. To survive 2022 and 2023, you have to be realistic with yourself, and that means lowering your standards. Focus on in-person positions in unsexy cities. Basically, throw all fully remote positions and jobs jobs in Silicon Valley, Southern California, and New York City out the window. You're going to focus on applying to companies in your local area, provided you're not in a big city, or to other smaller towns with companies that are hiring developers. One great way to narrow cities down is to think about where you have extended family. I have family in North Carolina, Illinois, Iowa, and Texas, so I'd look for openings in those areas, instead of heavily prioritizing Silicon Valley, New York City, and Southern California. Probably the worst mistake you can make is only applying to fully remote companies. Let me tell you, these jobs are going to get thousands thousands, if not tens of thousands of applications to entry-level positions. So you basically don't stand any chance whatsoever. And honestly, if you only have one offer from a company you're not super excited about, you should probably just take it. Even though the salary probably isn't great, it's easier to work your way up and iterate over time than constantly starting from scratch with nothing on your resume. My second tip is to expand your options beyond pure software engineering into fields like data analytics, software consulting, etc. There are tons of companies who hire for software consultants and data scientists.
scientists. If you can't get a job in engineering, maybe it's time to look for jobs in adjacent fields and slowly work your way back over time when the market gets better and you have more experience. These jobs are great stepping stones in the industry and will help you get something on your resume. I would probably Google software consulting in your local town and apply to those companies. My third tip is to keep on building your resume while you're working on applications and applying to interviews. Another mistake people make is while they're applying for positions, they assume their resume is frozen solid. You need to be looking for ways to increase your attractiveness as a candidate while you look for companies to apply for. Hackathons and university clubs are great for this. A lot of people tell me that they don't have any experience, but they also have no idea what projects to work on to build up that experience. It's really hard to just randomly come up with a project idea, and that's why you should sign up for hackathons or clubs that help you out with this. Also, put your class projects in your resume. I know they're probably not the most impressive applications in the world, but hey, at least they're something. You can also take on commercial projects for free. You could go to websites like Fiverr or Upwork and offer to build an app or website for free just to get experience and have something to talk about. You could also ask a friend or mentor if they have any ideas and just do what they say. My last tip is to heavily focus on building friendships and relationships in the industry. A lot of people really underestimate the power a strong connection at a company has. They can often significantly improve your chances of getting that first interview you so greatly desire. Okay, this does sound kind of fake, but if somebody mentions that they are currently working at or have worked at a name brand big tech company, you need to become friends with them or at least hang out with them once. A lot of people think it's unethical to pursue friendships with people who are accomplished in their field because yeah, you do end up benefiting from their unique experience. But this is basically the only good way to improve your network. This year, I started a small lead code club at my university where we meet three times a week to practice for coding interviews. And whenever I met someone who worked at Google, Apple, Coinbase, I will instantly invite them to come to the next meeting. You can ask them a ton of questions about how they got that first interview for the company, what it was like to work there, what experience do they have, do they have any advice, etc. By doing this, you will significantly improve your perspective and also greatly increase your reach across the industry. And I mean, it's not like you always have to stay a fake friend. If you genuinely like their personality, you can always hang out and move that acquaintanceship into a friendship. But yeah, to get those referrals and knowledge about big tech, you have to put yourself out there and befriend those who have mastered the industry. If you're interested in what a day in my life looked like as an Amazon intern living in LA, you can watch this video right here. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. A like would be outstanding and I will see you in the next video.